Hi everybody, welcome back to The Silver Lining. I'm your host, Juliet Vine, Miss Southwood Affair 2020. And well, um, I have a former Miss Southwood Affair here and she is someone that I idolize. I mean, everyone on this show that comes on here is incredibly impressive, hence why I began it. I wanted to interview incredibly inspiring women. But this guest has to be the person I look up to the most in my life. I mean, she knows that. I tell her that on a weekly basis, probably. Um, but she's an absolute queen. She is a former Miss Florida 2018. She was top three at Miss America. She's just an absolute boss. She is currently a student at Villanova Law School. So she is quite the accomplished young lady. And like I said, a queen, like just my idol. So I'm so excited to have her here. Please welcome my guest, Miss Florida 2018, Taylor Tyson. You're so sweet. Oh my gosh. I love getting your text. It brightens up my very <laughs> tough semester. So I appreciate it. Well, I was, I texted you, I remember a couple weeks ago and I mean like it's, it's it, people are going to be like rolling their eyes like she's tooting her own horn, but Miss Arizona, I interviewed her, Jacqueline Thomas, who's just, I absolutely love her. Hi Jacqueline. I know she'll listen to this because she loves you. Um, and she uh -huh. said to me, you remind me so much of Taylor Tyson. You look just like her. I swear I maybe texted Taylor <laughs> four times. I was like, Taylor, here's a screenshot. Guess what they said? And I, Taylor's probably like, oh my gosh, are you trying to be me? And the answer is yes. I am. <laughs> no, I love it. I remember the first time I met you and saw you compete and I was like, I told my mom, I'm like, oh my gosh, she's my little mini me. This like, you're so talented and like you are, but for me, piano, but at least for, you know, we both love classical music and you and opera. And I just, I just thought you were so incredibly talented and well-spoken. And that seems like so long ago now that we first met, but very, very proud of you and, uh, and about everything you've accomplished. Well, to let you guys know what Taylor is like, I mean, most of you will probably know her, or have the pleasure of meeting her. Um, but for those of you who don't know her, Taylor Tyson is like the most, she's just perfect. Like I met her and I remember it's almost five years. It'll be, um, yeah five years, which is so crazy. I was 14. And I remember she has her gingham pantsuit and her Kate Spade bag. And she's like, hi, I'm Taylor Tyson. And I was like, you're the prettiest person I've ever seen in my life. But I felt like, like a troll. Um, and I was like, I am an ugly gnome. This person is beautiful. Although she's very, like very tiny. Like you would think Taylor Tyson's like five, nine. She's the most petite thing, but she was just so gorgeous. I was like in awe. So I have loved Taylor for years and she is just so accomplished all around. Um, so it's hard not to idolize her. I mean, people from the fair, they always still talk about you, Taylor. And they're always like, you remind us of Taylor. And I literally, that's like the best compliment someone could give me. So you clearly have made an impression on all of them too. I miss my fair family. That was an amazing experience. And I remember telling you like, when you win, make sure you go to the fair as often as you can, like, because you'll just remember all of those great experiences and all the pictures and all the fun times. And especially now in the time of COVID, now you can look back at all of those fun times being out and about. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for you that you've had the same experience. Yes. And I remember, um, watching your Instagram stories when you were Miss South Florida Fair, the <laughs> when you were Miss Florida. And it was like crazy. I was like, I'm reliving everything Taylor does and what Luke for like the cloggers and <laughs> all like the different attractions. And so that was very cool. And I do get to experience it twice now, which is nice. I mean I get to yeah. be Miss South Florida Fair. I mean if there's any title you want twice, it's that one because you get to be the queen of the fair twice. And it'll be different of course, right. but it'll be fun. It'll be a nice change of pace anyway. And it'll be the first time I'm really allowed to go outside. But um like I keep mentioning, Taylor is so good at just like posting on her social media. I mean, of course, you've taken a little bit of hiatus as of recently, but um, you documented your whole um, journey to the Miss Florida crown and then Miss America crown with your audience, and you captivated so many people. And I'm sure people would love to hear the behind the scenes aspect of it, what preparing for all those big moments were really like. So I have a lot of questions for you if you're ready. Yes, absolutely. Let's do it. Okay. So my first question for you is just the beginning. I mean, when and how did you first get involved with the Miss America organization? And what do you believe you learned along the way that led you to your Miss Florida win? Well, when I was a younger, young adult, <laughs> um, I was really looking for opportunities to combine all of the different passions that I had. And there aren't really any other experiences or programs that will let you showcase so many different kind of like a wide range of talents or interests that you have. And at the time when I first, when I first started competing in Miss Florida, I was in school, I was in college studying political science. The big passion of mine was classical piano and performing. And I didn't have an outlet for that. And I really, really missed it because 
a giant part of my childhood was really competing in classical music competitions and performing and being on stage. So I missed that. Um, another big part of my life at that point was community service. And I wanted to do it on a larger scale. And I didn't really have the resources to do that on my own. And another thing was that I knew I wanted to be an attorney one day and I wanted to develop my public speaking skills so that one day I could be a more powerful advocate for clients in the future. So, I mean, thinking of where I started, like I just knew I had all these different interests and I wanted to be as well-rounded as possible and seeing like the end of my journey at 22 at that point, being on the Miss America stage and getting to perform piano in front of like 4 million people and answering a question on ABC, like, or two questions, I guess, by the end of the night, like, I am just so grateful for the kind of experiences that I had. What other chance can a young woman have to, you know, to really have all of those passions and all of those interests combined and highlighted? And I just, at the end of it, I felt like a much more well-rounded person. I'm in the confidence that I've gained. I, I feel that I use every day in law school, and I'm sure that I will as an attorney as well. So th that's really why I, began and and really the same values and the things that I I cherished in the beginning of my journey are things that I really realized and I I feel fulfilled its potential at the end of my journey so I always I'm like the biggest advocate for competing in the Miss America organization because I just think that it develops and strengths and strengthens who you are as a person um, and you really get to highlight and and just have that kind of confidence in yourself you are someone who has so many different talents and so many different, you know, incredible things about you. Um, so I do think like a Miss America organization, like you said, is just the perfect outlet to allow yourself to discover all those great talents and all those great accomplishments. So, and you, it's also just such a nice outlet for girls to promote their platform um, and share their ideas with the world. So like you said, you're a big advocate for girls competing in pageants, as am I. I just think that title holders are the most incredible women and surely so many of your accomplishments are related to the Miss America organization, like your big Miss Florida win. And I know it's a cliche question, but I remember watching you win Miss Florida. I watched it via live stream that year, but I just remember feeling like it was me because I just, I knew in my heart you were going to win. I mean, you were hand in hand with the current Miss Florida, Michaela McLean, who is That's amazing. Right. And, um, but I just was like, it's Taylor's year. Like, I know it. And I just remember watching it. I got chills and it was just the best moment. I mean, what a rock star you are. And I want to know though, what that moment was like for you. What was going through your mind? I mean, I just, I, I know that you have been involved with this organization for quite some time. Did you begin competing in 2014? Was it? Oh boy. You're going to make me go through the years. I was 19 <laughs> the first year I did Miss Florida. So <laughs> we can work backwards from that. But yeah, I was 19 and I actually, I, so I competed three times total, but I took a year off in between each time I competed. So I competed every other year. Um, I didn't really mean to do that. It was just something that happened, like looking at my other obligations that I had, whether it was for school or whatever I was doing. Um, so, and, and I really think that that was a good decision for me because it gave me a chance to grow and really decide who I was and who I wanted to be and those kind of things and not kind of rush it too much. Um, so I'm grateful that I did that, that I did it that way. Um, but yeah, that moment was something that I will definitely never forget. I, th so, you know, as you know, <laughs> I'm sure all of your listeners know, when the difference in time between calling up the runners up versus the first runner up and the winner, it feels like an entire day passes between who is first runner up and who <laughs> is the winner. And I, I mean, I, my stomach gets in knots, even when I watch other pageants, like on television, I, oh my gosh, I just get so nervous for oh, it. No. It's like a trained response, you know, for it. And anyway, so I just like, I remember praying to myself the whole time, like forced myself to drown everything out because I was worried I was going to like faint. <laughs> so I was just praying. And I, I remember that Michaela and I said some things to each other. I think we just said like, you know, I love you. Good luck. Like, or whatever, something very sweet. I remember it was a really special moment. Um, I don't remember everything that was running through my head, but I just remember when my name was called, I like everything went blank. I could only see like the lights from, from the stage, like kind of getting right in my eyes. And I just, I couldn't believe it. Like I was just still in shock. I, I mean, it took me a long time for it to like really sink in that it happened to me. Um, and it was just, it was something that I'll never forget. I'm glad that I remember it. I heard of a lot of girls, like they black out when they, when they get crowned because it's just so exciting and so surreal, but I was able to remember it. So I'll, 
cherish that moment forever for sure. And here we go. Your first runner up and the winner of a $7,000 scholarship is Miss Orlando Michaela McLean. Your new Miss Florida is Miss South Florida Fair, Taylor Tyson. I've asked now about 20-something um, different um, title holders about their crowning moment, and yes, most of them say that they black out. Um, yeah. So I am glad that you remember it. It was just... <laughs> such an incredible moment watching you win and I mean I knew though from watching your performance that you were going to win because well number one you're Taylor Tyson but number two you won several preliminary awards including um, preliminary talent and preliminary swimsuit you also mentioned to me last time we talked that you won um, interview and evening gown um, did you also were you also a finalist for quality of life I was I was first runner-up for quality of life which was awesome. Like I, I just felt really honored by that award is really, really special. It's more about platform work and charity work. So that really meant a lot to me as well. But yeah, I, so the thing is with those preliminary awards, um, I didn't know that I had won interview or evening gown until just moments before crowning. So at that point I had thought, you know, I just won swimsuit, I won talent. And, um, you know, there were other obviously preliminary winners. So it's not like, oh yeah, I won all these prelim awards. Like this is going to be, <laughs> this is going to go well for me. You know, it's not really like that. And then right before when I won those additional preliminary awards, I was like, Oh, what's going on? Like, wait, this is this is really good. Um, maybe it will be me. Um, so that was really nice too. But again, it happens. Final night happens very, very, very fast, and you don't you don't really have much time to like process anything. You just change and go, change and go. And that's another reason that like practice is just you just can't beat it. You cannot do anything but practice, 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 because you have to kind of run on autopilot, even though right. you don't think you will, you will, because there's adrenaline and it's just kind of chaotic backstage. So a lot of it has to be muscle memory and practice. And you're just like, I've done this before. I can do it again and just kind of go, go and put your nose down and do it. So Exactly. I, I've competed at Teen State so twice, so it's a little bit different, but of course I know from being in that environment, it does pass by extremely fast, so I completely right. understand what you're saying about that autopilot, and also it, what you said about you taking um, like a little year hiatus in between each year, um, that terrified me because I will be going back to Miss Florida for the first time in four years, um, which doesn't even feel real, but um, yeah, so I understand what you're saying, and um, I do want to know though, what, those preliminary wins, I want to ask how you believe you attained those. I guess I'll get more in depth into that later, but your swimsuit win, I do want to ask, you killed it in swimsuit. And <laughs> with everything going on, that was the last time at state that Miss, um, any Miss State pageant used swimsuit because at the Miss America that you went to, um, the great Miss America, the very different Miss America 2019, <laughs> um, she took out swimsuit. I mean, it was a lot more than just swimsuit that changed, but I digress. Right. right. <laughs> how, did, how did you feel about that, change in swimsuit I mean did that I remember asking you about it when we I heard I remember you were one of the first people I texted and you were like it's crazy but I can understand it and it's it's a move, movement forward but you also ended up winning this swimsuit prelim so it's like I guess you can see the reasons why but also I would assume swimsuit someone important to you as you know you prioritize fitness and nutrition clearly so I want to know what your feelings and thoughts were on that yeah, and that's an interesting question because for me, I've always kind of felt both sides of the coin. So yeah. I was fine doing swimsuit, obviously. You know, I when you when I chose to do Miss Florida, swimsuit was part of the competition. So it wasn't like it was forced upon me or I like involuntarily did it. I <laughs> wanted to I wanted to do Miss Florida, so I knew swimsuit was part of it. So I obviously was okay with it. Um, and then I ended up winning swimsuit, and for me, that was a personal choice that I knew that that wasn't my strongest area of competition because I had previously won awards and talent and interview and things like that. And I never came close in my opinion to swimsuit. I, I never won a prelim award in swimsuit. So I thought to myself, you know, if I can win prelim swimsuit, I might be able to win the whole thing because that's, if that's my weakest thing and I can bring it up to as equally strong as the other things, 
then that's, that's kind of what I needed to do. So that was my mission for the year um, leading up to Miss Florida. And it was just a mental thing that I knew I needed to knock and conquer. Um, as you know, like, so we're both musicians, a lot of girls, a lot of just like amazing competitors are dancers and they're athletes. I mean, that's, to them, it's a little bit more second right. nature to be so physically fit and they're on their feet hours every day and they're amazing. Like, it's they're used to wearing those very revealing midriff costumes. I mean, it's kind right. of, you oh, have washboard abs up there and I'm like, okay, I can hit a high note, but that doesn't. No, exactly. <laughs> and that's how it is. Like, I'm, I'm playing the piano. I'm sitting on my butt six hours a day. That's certainly not helping me. I'm not the most physically active person either. So um, that to me was a really big shift in just mentality. And I knew that I wanted to conquer it. And um, it was so, so satisfying when I did. I, I like, it was my goal, obviously, to win prelim swimsuit. But of course, when you get there, it's, it's still a draw. So it's like, I had to be okay with not winning it, but I just needed to know mentally I did my best and I looked good and all of that stuff. So to me, it was a very empowering thing. Um, and I think that a lot of, it, it's funny because women feel empowered by so many different things. Right. They can feel empowered by being in a swimsuit and feeling really sexy and beautiful. And then some women feel um, objectified by that. And it's, right. it's so interesting that women feel empowered by such different things. And it, every woman is different and every woman will feel something differently. And for me, when they moved from not having swimsuit, I mean, to not having swimsuit, I thought, well, I think the number one thing that will happen is that women who are talented and intelligent and well-spoken and confident who maybe stayed out of competing because they would never want to do swimsuit because that to them was a uh, made it was very negative feelings associated with it. Now they're going to want to compete, and that to me was exciting because I have always been impressed and inspired by the kind of women that compete in this organization because they are so intelligent and they are so headstrong and they have they really want to change the world positively and to me it was one of those things where it's like hey if we can get more and different kind of women to compete in this organization because we don't have swimsuit great you know and and to me I so like you mentioned at Miss Florida I competed in swimsuit at Miss America a mere two months later all of the scoring had changed and there was no swimsuit. So you also had to be flexible mentally and, and, you know, knowing that those things were going to change. And I think it was just important to have a positive attitude about it, whether or not that was like the ideal thing for you or not. And I felt very strongly that the reason I got involved in MAO was all of the state, all the same elements that were still there and were still strong, the talent, the interview and community service and all of that stuff. So to me, it was just like, okay, we're going to go with it. We're going to ride that, ride that wave. And it ended up being fine. Um, but I can definitely see both sides of the coin from, from people who disagree with the change and who, pe from people who love it. So. Right. And, um, I have so many more questions to ask you about like your preparation for that win and your talent, yeah. everything in between. But I, I think this is a good segue because you mentioned that at Miss America, when you went a mere two months after Miss Florida, Miss Florida is one of the last state pageants. So it's kind of like you're <laughs> into that nearly immediately. Yeah. Um, you had t tremendous amount of changes. I mean, I'm interviewing right now, um, all the girls who are current state title holders and I've been hearing about their changes from their year and how that affected their experience and you guys had a completely different year the year before um, and this was the first year I believe after Cara Mund um, where we saw Miss America 2.0 take shape which that I don't believe the 2.0 is a part of it anymore but at the time it had just begun so you are um, there and you are experiencing all these changes firsthand I wonder did that phase you at all I mean I like you said all the elements that make MAO MAO were still there and you felt prepared because you won Miss Florida for a reason it's not that you couldn't handle it but you're going on stage potentially in front of millions of you know people watching I mean combined in the audience and at their homes watching on TV and you are com you're handling this completely new format I mean as you mentioned you are someone that's been involved with the organization for a while I'm sure you dreamed of the Miss America you grew up watching with Burt Parks playing over the loudspeaker it was quite different than what you had experienced all those years before did that scare you like I don't know what I'm getting into because I remember talking to some title holders from your year, year as well they were giving you guys changes as you were preparing to go on stage like you we were, were literally getting new notes 
right before the competition. So I wonder, that was a very long-winded question, did that like psych you out? Were you like, I can't do this? Or did you just say, I have to do it no matter what? Yeah, I had to force myself to be like, we're going to do this. It was going to be great no matter what. And, and the reason that, okay, so I could tell from the amount of changes and kind of the quick turnaround for a couple of changes <laughs> and some last minute things that it was going to keep happening. We weren't going to be able to just be comfortable with how it was at that moment. And then, okay, no more changes. Like, let's just, you know, focus on how it's going to be in this version. It was going to keep changing. So if I let myself be upset by that, affected by it, or kind of feel negative or angry about it, then I knew that that was going to come through in my performance. And the thing is, is that when you disagree with what's going on or when you just aren't happy with it, cannot cope with the changes, it will come through one way or another. It might, you can try to mask it as much as you want. Um, and I know that it was really discouraging for a lot of the other girl, my, my Miss America sisters. And it was for me too. I'm not trying to say that I wasn't affected by it. I was a hundred percent, but at a certain point, you know, I still wanted to be Miss America, whether it was Miss America 1.0 or 2.0, I was there and I had to focus only on that. The good part about it is, is that if you prepared, which I did, and I know all of my sisters did as well for your state pageant, you were going to be fine because talent stayed the same, right? I mean, it's exactly what we did at Miss, Miss Flor uh, at our state pageant. Nothing needed to change from that. Our evening gown. Okay. So you maybe walked a little bit faster. All right. You know, so you, you did a, like a 20 second introduction. Everybody can do that. You know, your interview was still 10 minutes. It was still the same kind of things like that. Yeah. They changed a couple of different things around and we didn't have swimsuit. So that's just like kind of one thing less that we had to do. So to me, I try to see the positives. I try to see the silver lining in it, Juliet. <laughs> but, um, you know, and I honestly, that was just kind of my fight or flight response to it. It wasn't because I'm a naturally very analytical person. I like, th I like to know how things are going to be. I want to plan and I want to visualize it. And I need to, I need to have all of those things to do that. I can okay. tell that about you. I just, yeah. I know. I, I really am. Funny. I really am. I am. But I, but at a certain point, it was like, such a quick time between Miss Florida and Miss America, two months, and the changes were happening very, very rapidly. And you didn't have, if you were going to, if I was going to be that way, and I was going to refuse to be flexible, I would have sunk and not swam. <laughs> so it was a fight or flight response. And I had to be like, okay, change, but we're going to do it like this. I'm not going to need to be analytical. I'm not going to need that. I'm going to be able to be flexible. And I'm just going to force myself to be that way. And it's, that's just the way it's going to be. And I was able to do that for the most part. That doesn't mean that like sometimes you have like a bit of a crisis and you're like, oh my gosh, what's going on? This is <laughs> sure. it. But I try not to let it get to me too much because I was still there with the same goal that I was, whether or not, you know, the changes happened. So that was, I was kind of happy that I was able to do that. And it's just a matter of, and I mentioned this for, for my prep for swimsuit too. It's like, it's just mostly about being mentally strong. That's 80% right. of the battle in preparing and competing because like, let's, okay. So you're at Miss America or I was at Miss America for two weeks. That's a long time to be mentally strong and to keep right. yourself encouraged and positive and keep going and energetic and up, 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 you know, but it's, it's possible, but you, it, it's more like a mental game than anything else. So that's and, how I dealt with it. <laughs> right. And, you know, from watching you, you just exuded this confidence where I would just personally never know that these things were going on behind the scenes. The only reason why I even am able to ask this question is not because any of you or your fellow competitors showed it, but because, you know, I just, I'm a long time fan of Miss America. I noticed these changes myself, but the way that you mentioned before being adaptable and flexible is an important part of being a title holder or a good competitor. Mm -hmm. And you took these changes in stride, you went with them and you did the best you could with them. Clearly there were some changes though, that were like, not bad, just like, Oh, that's interesting. One of those changes was that they had, um, the, girls ask each other the questions and they <laughs> wrote them. And I remember thinking- I forgot about that. <laughs> I know, you probably blocked it out. It's, honestly, each question is like just the worst. Like, I just don't like it. And like, yeah, you're analytical, cool. you like yeah. to know what's going on. And that's just like your worst nightmare being asked like a random question in front of millions of people. But they have the girls ask each other these questions. I remember, um, 
I, I might be biased. And you might tell me, no, I'm wrong. But I thought your question was a little bit harder than the other ones. Because oh, yeah, yeah. Some of them are getting like, and okay, every question is valid. Every question is great. And let me just say, every girl nailed every question up there. Like, they did, pack of ladies. But I remember some girls were like, what makes you strong? Or what was challenging about this week? And your question's slipping my mind right now, but I remember, I'll, I'll insert a clip of it anyway. But I remember thinking, her question is so much harder. And, you know, I wondered what you thought about that. Florida, you're up. Okay, Louisiana, ask your question. If crowned, what would you do to reach a more diverse audience? It's so important that Miss America, especially this time, Miss America 2.0, is relatable to all audiences, people from all backgrounds, all ethnicities. And it would be one of my priorities to make sure that I was relatable to all of those audiences and hopefully learn a little bit about them as well, because what's most important in being relatable is listening to others and their stories. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was, that was interesting because I, so we learned that this change was going to happen during rehearsal, I believe, some, some rehearsal. And I think, and I'm not saying that it's anybody else's fault but mine, because like I said, I can be very tunnel vision and very focused and it's very possible that I missed the explanation of what was going to happen here. But I thought we all wrote our own question and the board or whoever was, was picking them were just going to choose questions out of the ones that we composed to be asked. I didn't realize that our, like it was only the top 15 and it was only like whatever. I remember they, they had a, an interesting way of doing that. So I, the question that I composed was actually the only one in the top 15 that had anything to do with, with politics. And it wasn't a hard pol political question. It was just, I think it was something like, do you think that the United States is still like, a world leader or it was like the number one in something I don't I was something like that um, or or something that I felt was it was somewhat political but it's still like I think that and, and the girl who answered it I, I mean I thought she did an amazing job um, but I don't know I, I mine was a little bit different than the other ones and I thought I don't know I, I guess I thought they were somewhat equal but I was out for the part where everybody kind of like did more softball questions um yeah um but uh, no and like that's fine because sometimes softball questions and i will say this and i tell this to anybody i like try to help or give advice to softball questions can be some of the tougher ones to answer because they seem easy but they're they're actually not and we we kind of like assume that we're going to have the answer to them or we we think we're going to get it but sometimes those are the toughest ones to answer right. um and sometimes i prefer things like political questions or things like that so that was an interesting little thing they did there i think that i think it came from a good place because I think they thought if we asked each other questions, it would be less nerve wracking because we love each other. And, but it, it, did, it was just kind of awkward because like for me, I remember um, one of our hosts, Carrie Ann, she like, remember, I remember she told me to like, don't run away. Or, well, you, like, I, was, away. I was like, I, I answered my thing and I was like, I'm out of here. And she was like, like, don't run away. <laughs> we were like literally walking off the stage. Like I'm done. I won Miss America. Can we leave now? Like, we're I, I just like, like, what are you doing? <laughs> Well, that kind of thing throws me because like, I'm not used to stage blocking or anything like yeah. that. I'm not good at, I mean, I'm not good at choreography, like those kinds of things, elements in a pageant were just certainly not my strengths. So mm -hmm. in my head, I'm like, okay, I answered the question. Now I need to worry about my like piano performance. Like, bye. And she's like, no, you still have to stand here. And it's like, oh, okay. So Thank you so much. Well done, Florida. Florida. Come this way, don't try to run away. And finally, she was our last questioner, and now she's our last response. Come this way. Th those kind of things. <laughs> that's the kind of thing you just have to like, you just have to take in stride. Like I could be mortified that they said that on national TV, but I'm just like, yeah, like that sounds like me. Well, it, no, it was, it was iconic. I was just like, only Taylor Tracy could do that. And it wouldn't like look stupid. It would look iconic. Like, because you, like, okay. you, you don't like, you don't like, again, I, I'm going to like slow mo and everything in here. But again, you don't like um, come back like, oh, sorry. You're like, oh. <laughs> 
and then you're like, pull out the question. Um, and then the second, okay, you know, you have yeah. to do it. My dad, ever since I was little, he's like, never let them see you sweat. So I have that Oh, mindset. Frank, we love Frank. Oh, Frank, yeah. yes, and his little nuggets of wisdom. So those kind of things stick in my head. Your just, Frank you know. stories, I mean, I've missed your Instagram and your Frank highlights are the best. I remember that he was like on a monologue about selfies and he's like, wheezies, feezies, selfies, and then like, stop taking selfies. And then you're like, he insists on me having his photos taken minutes after a monologue about him hating photos. Also him singing Post Malone was a great one. Oh yeah. So funny. I love Frank. Really, really good ones. I know. So you mentioned I was on a big like social media hiatus. And the reason I did that back in like, March or May or whenever I did it was my semester was so tough, so overwhelming. And I realized like, okay, any spare time that I have, I cannot be spending it scrolling on social media. And it's so, it's interesting because when I was competing, obviously social media has a very specific purpose. You want to promote yourself, what you're doing, your platform and all these things. And then you know, it stopped having so much of a purpose for me. And I, I always say that like social media is like a fine line of you using it or it using you. And I was just like, okay, I need to take a break, take a step back. And it's been great. Like it's been very peaceful and everything. And I always say, oh yeah, I'll go back. But I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> you need to come back for my mental health. Um, I need your content. So we'll discuss that. Oh, no, I love how I'm like, Taylor, I, well, I literally, I, I, I sound scary, but I'm telling you guys, when you find someone that you can relate to who like is, you know, of course, like in the Florida org and everything, like when you find someone that you can like be actual friends with who you idolize, like that's just like a very cool experience. And I have not had that till Taylor Tyson. So say your judgment for like somewhere else. You're just jealous that my idol, like, you know, I like to flex on you. Anyway, um, she's like, okay, scary. Um, the second question is at Miss America, um, when you're in your white dress, you slayed, um, that question and you had this, um, quote, oh, you were like, failure is a funny word because it implies defeat. And I believe every setback is a setup for your comeback. I it's like a monologue. I memorized it, of course. Um, and the guy, after you answer, he goes like this. Like, so that, my dad loves to tell that story. He's like, I just heard him say it the other day. He's like that disc jockey from Nashville. He <laughs> this after Taylor answered her question. I'm like, who said well, disc judges, jockey? <laughs> judges are supposed to be poker face. Like, I remember entering my first teen competition back in 2016. Um, and the director, like, I thought she hated me because, I, like, during the rehearsals, like, she would just, like, not be rude, but she would, like, never smile or be solicitous. Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh, no, we're supposed to keep poker face. Like, judges, directors, like, we're not supposed to be impartial. Like, you should never know how the judges are feeling, which it, they did a very good job of Miss Self Affair because they were all, like, and then afterwards, they were like, we loved you. I'm like, I didn't think so. I thought you all hated me. But you never see judges make many facial expressions is what I'm trying to get at. So when a judge literally was like, yeah, that, that answer is money. I was like, it's like they didn't do that for anybody else. So I mean, your answers killed it. I, I just was well, very surprised to see that a judge was that um, open about his favoritism of Taylor Tyson. Yeah. Florida, Taylor Tyson, come on over and pick your judge, please. All right, she has chosen judge number four, Bobby Bones. Hello. Hi. Hey, so I wrote my last book about failure and all the failures that I've been through, and I had a lot of friends share failures with me. I wonder what is your most challenging and difficult failure that you can share with us that you learned from? Failure is a funny word because it implies defeat. And I have had many setbacks in my life, but I'm a firm believer that every setback is a setup for your comeback. And from every, every tribulation that I have faced, every rejection that I have had, I have used that to turn it into how to learn to be a better version of myself. Thank you. Well said. And that's another thing, like sometimes the judges are very loyal to that instruction and they won't show facial expression and sometimes they will and it won't be for you and it's easy to get in your head about it 
And that's just something you have to block out, like at locals or state competitions or even Miss America. Like, obviously, he had that reaction, which was amazing, but I didn't win. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like that was any indication. It was just, you know, my answer was okay and all that stuff. So that's another thing, like advice to girls competing, like don't let that kind of thing get in your head. Sometimes judges may smile and it's just like kind of, they didn't mean to, like it's involuntary or they like you or whatever, but you don't have to worry about it. Like that's not something that, you know, any of you guys like should, should get in your head over. Um, I I've been definitely, I've competed before and been in pageants where they're like a little bit more expressive. And then I, I kind of noticed that they were less expressive with me. So it's just good to like not read into it too much. But yeah, that was a nice feeling because at least it was like, okay, at least I didn't bomb it because that is the fear. I mean, I think that even, even though I get very nervous for, for performing piano in the talent portion, I think that for anybody, it's like, you know that you're going to get a little nervous to be on live TV and ABC answering a question. You have no idea what they're going to ask. And it's silence except for you speaking for that 20, 30 seconds, whatever. It's nerve wracking for sure. So that was a nice little validation that I didn't totally embarrass myself. No, you were incredible um, in onstage question. I mean, they asked two different onstage questions that year. Right. Um, so that was, it was much more prevalent, but it was almost reminiscent of like what you, how you might've performed an interview. Like we got to see that kind of side of it, right. which, I, which I enjoyed. I actually loved Miss America 2019. I didn't, I didn't really have a problem with it. I thought it was great. Miss America 2019. I thought it was good too. Yeah. You know, when you guys came out and you were stating, um, you know, I'm Taylor Tyson. I'm a single cum laude graduate from Florida Atlantic University. And now I'm going to Stetson, which at the time you were now you're at Villanova. Right. See how I literally memorize it guys. I'm she's like she's a little bit impressed um but like, like just, I don't even remember what I said <laughs> I know it's okay I've watched it maybe four times in the past few months so anyway. a summa cum laude graduate of Florida Atlantic University and incoming JD LLM candidate at Stetson Law I'm Taylor Tyson from Florida oh um moving on uh but you guys got to say your educational accomplishments right yeah away. so just right off the bat you could see like this is a whole new miss america like they are putting education first and of course you look like a gorgeous queen like it wasn't like you didn't look like you belonged at miss america but it was like no you're putting this first and then you can see how talented and gorgeous i am and all the things I, I feel the same as you i liked a lot of the things that they did our year i thought it was still exciting to watch i liked the red carpet rollout i oh, liked the red carpet <laughs> you know what i mean i liked all those little things i still think it was pretty interesting like you said and it was fast fast paced enough that there was like enough to enough to watch I think it was still pretty exciting yeah and you know I do want to say and I hope how I phrase this makes sense I'm, I'm sure you'll agree that you know anytime I watch a candidate and I analyze their Miss America performance because it's essentially what I do to base my questions off of there's uh, interesting things that I find um yeah. some of them are usually run-of-the-mill questions though for you, there were many different things that happened to you during Miss America that were like, especially like, I took notice of like, I'm going to get back to your talent, like the iconic hair flip. Um, and then we had the judge doing this and then we had Carrie Ann and Abba trying to get you to not run off stage. Um, and then we had the red carpet. And I love this story because I remember telling you about this and you acknowledged that this was like a thing that did happen and I wasn't crazy. You have this um, like Miss America does, the girls have voiceovers during their evening gown where they describe why they chose their evening gown. And you were saying, many people were saying, is it gold or silver? And they were debating. And then like, you have this whole monologue and it's inconclusive. And then the guy at the end of the red carpet, is like, yes, that gold gown or whatever. And you just make this face. <laughs> like you're like, you're like this, you're like, I just explained like that I didn't know what color it was and it, like your face yeah. literally looks so done like you're not having it but I mean you look stunning and I do want to ask you about how you chose that dress and I will but I want to know like were you like like when he asked that question like just clearly ignoring the entire monologue were you thinking that because your face was kind of like really <laughs> I spent a couple of weeks thinking this dress was gold, and a couple of friends of mine said, no, this is silver. So the jury's out on whether it's gold or silver. It's metallic, and it's rhinestone from top to bottom, and that's what matters. Okay, gold sequins. What message do you have tonight? What message do you have tonight? Tonight. It's my mission to equip girls with the tools they need to rise up, lean in, and know their value. Because when women lead, we all succeed. Thank you. 
that's one of the things that I had to work on that obviously still seeped through. Like I have an <laughs> expressive face. Like sometimes you can't tell what people are thinking, but I've always been that way. Like I feel that, you know, if my parents look at me, they know exactly what I'm thinking. People who know me yeah. very well, like they can kind of read my face very well. So I don't really know what I was thinking when he said that, but I do remember that, okay, so like we walked down the red carpet, right? And there was somebody who was going to hold a microphone and we were going to say our like 20 second or 10 second spiel, whatever it was. And so in rehearsal, we had people doing it both ways where they would say a comment to us first and give us the mic or not. And I think in prelims, it was more like, what do you have to say tonight? Or what's important to you? So I think I wasn't expecting him to say anything else other than that. And then he kind of like said something, which was like nice. He says thing about my gown or whatever, but I was probably a little thrown off by that because they were very specific about blocking and when you spoke. And, you know, I was like obviously waiting for him to put the microphone in my face. So I don't know. A lot of things were going on that night. <laughs> I mean, but like I said, so many like interesting things happened to you. Like, I feel like your performance just is so iconic to watch because not only are you iconic, but you just have so many interactions with like so many different people which is not like, really how does that happen I don't know it's just <laughs> so many things happening oh and then like my favorite moment which I don't know if I talked to you about this but um I definitely in one of the interviews I did for like the Lakelander magazine as I was in Miss Florida I talked about this and it's my favorite moment like from that night Ooh. is when um I came out to do my piano performance and the girl who was right before me was Ellery and she was Miss Colorado and she had just finished her monologue and she's incredible. She's a force of nature. I love her. Um, and you know, it was, it's so nerve wracking. Like, I'm not going to lie. It is so nerve wracking. I was nervous. And again, it's that fight or flight thing. Like you're standing out, you're standing backstage, you're by yourself. I'm about to play the piano in front of millions of people watching. It's going to be silent while I play the piano. It's just me. It's like, it's scary. And, um, I remember walking out and we passed each other. Right. So, so she's walking back and I'm walking out. We both came from the middle of backstage because they didn't do the wing thing or whatever, which I also thought was kind of cool. Anyway, so we're passing each other and she looks over at me and she's like, I love you. And I'm like, I love you. And I just went so calm. Like we just had like a moment of silence around us because they were moving the piano out. So it was super quiet and the announcers weren't saying anything. We just made eye contact and I was just like, it just like soothed me like right away. And it was just like so special. Um, and it's like one of those things that you don't realize like how other people affect your life and your journey. It's just like those little moments make the biggest difference to other people. So that was really special. And that's something that I'll cherish forever. Um, and yeah, I needed it. Like I needed that like two second moment between myself and her. And then I was calm and I sat down and, and played and that was that. And then my hair got in my face. I had to flip it out and everybody thinks that it was on purpose. You had to be like extra sassy, but it really wasn't. It was because I had cute little layers cut and they did not fall back into my ponytail. And um, another thing that <laughs> stemmed out of your Miss America experience was that you became a gift. You literally yeah. became a gift, and that's that's an honor um, that I feel like few people will ever experience in their lifetime. And I, peaked, I, remember, I peaked when a gift was made about me. That right, was and I mean, yeah. out of all your accomplishments, you know, law school, an internship with a judge, you know, being an honor student, summa cum laude graduate, your number one accomplishment is becoming a gift. I just don't want you to hear any different. Yeah, sure. I'm <laughs> Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning into my channel today. Your support means the world to me. If you like what you saw, please subscribe to my channel and like and comment on my videos because your support is what fuels my ability to make content. I'll see you guys next time. And once again, thanks for joining me for another episode of The Silver Lining. Love you guys. Bye.